Welcome to the third example in chapter 3. The question reads, the stress strain diagram for polyester resin is given in the figure below. If the rigid beam is supported by a strut AB and post CD, both made from this material and subjected to a load of 80 kilonewtons, determine the angle of tilt of the beam when the load is applied. The diameter of the strut is 40 millimeters and the diameter of the post is 80 millimeters. Okay. Uh, so the first assumption or the first given we're going to note down is the fact that we have a rigid beam, right? So when this beam does deform, um, and in this case it'll tilt or like twist a bit, um, but when it does deform due to this, this force P, it's going to deform perfectly straight, right? Perfectly straight. We're not going to have any bending or, or any of this stuff we're going to get to later. Um, but for now, we, we make this assumption. So let's write that down. So we're going to have a rigid beam, rigid beam. Uh, AC. Uh, we're also given the diameters of the strut and the post, right? So diameter of the strut or bar AB is uh, 40 millimeters and the diameter of the post, bar CD, is 80 millimeters. Okay, uh, we're also given the magnitude of force P and using that we're going to find some very important information um, but we'll get to it in the free body diagram. So it has a magnitude of 80 kilonewtons. Perfect. I think that's all for givens. We can move on to unknowns. Unknowns. Uh, so this question wants us to find the angle of tilt. So I'll explain it conceptually real quick, um, but the free body diagram will make it make much more sense. Uh, so if we have this beam right here, this beam AC, when I apply this force P, it's going to, to elongate this one bar AB, and it's going to elongate bar CD, right? Let me repeat that just in case. Once I apply this force P, what is it going to do just conceptually, just logically? What is it going to do to this post right here or, or bar CD? Well, it's going to compress it, right? So it's going to compress it down. So you're going to have some deformation, right? So we'll call this delta L CD. Okay, now let's shift gears. Let's look at bar AB. What's going to happen to bar AB? Well, in this case, it's not going to compress it, but it's going to it's going to have a tensile force, right? It's going to have a tensile axial force. It's going to it's going to um, elongate it, right? So it's going to come down maybe here, right? And then this will be your delta LAB. So from this setup, what what is our beam going to look like? Well, if it elongates by this much, if AB elongates by this much, and um, CD is compressed by this much it, it should be straight but this is what our beam is kind of going to look like right so it's going to kind of be tilted like this right due to the compression delta L CD and due to the elongation delta L A B and this is tensile and this is compression this is just conceptually. We're not, like I know it's it says all this fun stuff on the stress strain diagram, but um, this is just conceptually. You don't really need to use that in this question. Um, but this is what your setup is kind of going to look like. So what's the angle we want to find? Well, the angle of tilt we want to find is is this guy right here, this theta. And that's basically how you do this problem. But um, we'll, we'll go through it all again uh, in case this was a bit confusing. But talking about the stress strain diagram, we kind of forgot something in Givens. We want to find also the elastic modulus. We know, like, we know the, that the elastic modulus is equal to yield stress over yield strain. Therefore, in this case, it is equal to 32.2 um, megapascals divided by 0 0.01 millimeters per millimeter. I have the value here somewhere. Uh, you're going to end up getting um, that your modulus of elasticity is equal to 3.22 gigapascals and don't forget to convert that to megapascals if needed in our calculations but I'll remind you um, okay uh, so just to recap this is the angle we're trying to look for theta okay so the next course of action is to find the forces that cause the elongation in bar CD and bar AB, and we're going to do that using uh, a free body diagram uh, to find the magnitude of the forces um, that cause that elongation. So we're going to do free body diagram of bar AC. So free body diagram, uh, it kind of looks like this. You have a force in the middle, and then you have symmetric um, like distances away. 
to the strut and the post. So this distance right here is 0 0.75 meters. And then this dis distance is also 0 0.75 meters. Okay, what forces act? Well, I have a force from the strut, right? That acts on my beam. The, but does it act this way or does it act this way? And same thing with the post. Like, obviously, I can do the moment sum, but just conceptually. Like, how would you determine what way it acts? Just conceptually. Well, if I'm looking just at my bar, what direction do these forces have to be? And notice that this distance right here and this distance right here are the same. So what direction and what magnitude do my forces have to be if this p-value is 80 kilonewtons? Well, let's say my forces are downwards, and this is just the direction. Well, I can't have this because my bar AC would no longer be stationary. It would just fall down, right? Because all the forces are, are pointing down. Same thing if one of them was down and one of them was up. What happens at this point? Well, I have a moment. Like, everything starts twirling and twisting, right? Well, what does that mean? That means these two forces have to be facing up to keep this bar stationary, right? And if this has a value of 80 kilonewtons, what value do these forces need to be? Well, they have to be 40. Half of it, because, again, you have the symmetrical distance right here. And if you want to prove that this works, you take a moment anywhere. You take a moment about this point C, you take a moment where P acts, you take a moment where A acts, you're going to find that these forces from the strut to the bar and from the, the post to the bar are 40 kilonewtons in magnitude. And then we can call this force AB and force CD. And even if you want to do it, like the, the sum of forces in the Y direction works out, all of these things work out. And even if you want to go further, you can look at um, your this diagram we explained before. If the po if the force from the post onto the um, onto the bar is facing upwards, that means the force from the the bar onto the post is facing downwards, right? Because they have to be equal and opposite. And what does that mean? Well, that means if this force is facing downwards, that confirms our assumption that this bar CD is going to be compressed downwards. And similarly, if the force from the bar to the strut acts upwards, that means the force from or the force from the strut to the bar acts upwards, that means the force from the bar to the strut has to act downwards. Therefore, elongating our strut, right? But at the end of the day, you can just do some a moment here, some moment here, some moment here. You know this value is 80 kilonewtons. You could probably figure it out by now. Um, but that's just conceptually, you know? Um, so hopefully that was helpful. But long story short, we found these values. Now we can move on to finding the elongation, right? And again, we want to find the elongation to see how much our bar will tilt, right? Because um, I explained it before, so yeah. <laughs> Don't want to explain it all over again. So... Um, we want to find the elongation. Find the elongation in AB and CD, in the strut and the post. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, AB and branch off. So the deformation in AB or the elongation in AB uh, is equal to the strain of AB multiplied by the original length of AB. I'd zoom out right like that. Uh, the elongation of AB is equal to 2, or the, the original length of AB is equal to 2 meters, right, as we have over, up here. Uh, but the strain, I don't know yet. I know that strain, AB, is equal to stress in AB divided by the elastic modulus. Do I have the elastic modulus? Yes, I do. It's um, 3.22 gigapascals or uh, 3,220 megapascals. Right, I want to find stress AB. Stress AB is simply equal to the force of AB, or, or the axial force causing uh, the stress in AB, divided by the cross-sectional area. And the cross-sectional area is simply pi over 4, the diameter of AB squared, which is 40 millimeters squared, but we'll keep it like this, squared. And what did we say that this force is? We just calculated it up right here, and the diameter is given up here. So we simply have um, 40 kilonewtons or 40 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons 
divided by pi over 4, 40 millimeters squared. Perfect. And just like that, we found the deformation, right? So let's plug all these numbers in. So delta LAB is equal to, um, let's actually simplify things and let me give the value. This is going to end up being 31.83 megapascals. So now we can plug in all the numbers. So your stress is going to be 31.83 megapascals divided by, or your strain, my bad, or your strain is going to equal the stress over the elastic modulus. So subbing this guy in for strain, you get that your, stre your stress is equal to 31.83 megapascals divided by 3,220 megapascals multiplied by 2 meters. And don't forget to convert this guy to millimeters, right? Uh, from this, you're going to end up getting, um, just to make sure that I have everything right, and just for not confusing ourselves, let's make this a 2,000 millimeters. You're going to end up getting a deformation uh, or an elongation in bar AB uh, to be a value of 19.77 millimeters, right? Perfect stuff. Now we do the exact same thing for the post, for bars, for bar CD. Delta LCD is equal to the strain in delta, uh, is equal to the strain of bar CD multiplied by the original length of bar CD. I know that the original length of bar CD is equal to 0 0.5 meters or 500 millimeters, I know that the strain in bar CD is equal to the stress in bar CD divided by the elastic modulus. I know that the elastic modulus, once again, is 3,220 megapascals. I know that the, the, the stress is equal to um, the force in CD divided by pi over 4 dCd squared. And this ends up equaling 40 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons, divided by pi over 4. The diameter in this case, I think, is 80 millimeters, right? We plug this value in, 80 millimeters squared. You end up, you're going to end up getting a stress value of 7.958 megapascals. We plug all of this lovely stuff in, similar to what we did last time. You're going to get the delta LCD. In this case, a compression of the post CD is going to end up equaling 7.958 megapascals divided by 3,220 megapascals multiplied by 500 millimeters. You're going to end up getting that your deformation or your compression um, length, uh, in this case, is going to be 1.26 1.236 millimeters. Okay, perfect. So we did all this good stuff and let's make it way smaller because we need a little bit more space for the next part. Okay, so we have these values right here. These are important values. So what does this basically describe? If we draw our beam once more and this we're gonna call find angle as a step five, Find angle. Okay. Uh, let's draw our beam once more. This is A. This is C. Right? What does this information tell us? This basically tells us that... Um, let's use the red thing color. Oops. <laughs> let's use this guy. What does this information tell us? If this is where your post is, or this is where your strut is, and this is where your post is, what does this tell us? This tells us that my my strut is going to come down 19.77 millimeters, right? Okay. What does this information tell us? This tells us that my post is going to be compressed by 1.236 millimeters. What does that ha what does that make our rigid bar do? And this actually should be much longer, but let's let's say it's like this instead. 
it's not the scale, but still. Um, what will our bar do? Well, this point right here is going to come down to this point now, right? It's going to elongate. It's going to go with the strut. And then what's going to happen here? Same thing. This point C is going to come to C prime and A prime. And therefore, our bar is going to look like this, right? What angle do we want to find? Well, we want to find this angle right here, this angle of tilt, right? So what can I do? Well, I can just take a, a relative value. And let me actually draw this out um, now that I explained it. So maybe this is our A prime. This distance right here is 19.77 millimeters. Uh, this is our C prime. And this distance right here is 1.236 millimeters. This is delta L C D. This is delta L A B. Okay. And this is how our new bar is going to look like. We want to find this angle right here. Let's make a nice horizontal line. We want to find this theta right here. Okay. Well, I can easily find it with one of the, the trigonometric functions. In this case, I'll use... um. In this case, and I know this distance right here, right, from all the way up here, I know that this distance from A to C is equal to 2.5 meters. 2 point, I don't know, let me see. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's, oh my god, it's equal to 1.5 meters, this distance right here. This distance right here is equal to 1.5 meters or 1,500 millimeters. So how can I find this angle of theta, this angle of tilt for my bar? How can I find it? Well, if I take the relative, if I just subtract this value off, I can find this distance right here. Because I know that this distance right here is just equal to 19.77 minus 1.236, right? And this will end up giving me 18.534 millimeters. So if I want to find this distance right here, I can simply subtract it out, and I can say that this orange distance, um, my relative, basically, deformation um, is equal to 18.53, uh, I think I said 6, but it's actually 4, so 534 millimeters, right? Okay, again, how can I find this theta? I can easily find it at this point using um, tangent in this case, so it's opposite over uh, adjacent. Right, so tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. In this case, my opposite is 18.534 meters, millimeters. So tangent theta is equal to 18.534 millimeters divided by 1500 millimeters. If I solve for theta, I'm going to get that theta is equal to 0 0.7079 degrees and this is my angle of tilt obviously this is way like this is exaggerated by a lot but this is going to be your angle uh, of tilt for this question and this is how you solve this question